Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this uh, NVD3 library series. So in this video then, carrying on from the last one, where we've now got our amazing clear my chart button, I want to add another button here where when I click it, it mimics calling an API for new data and actually change the data that's on the chart dynamically. And we'll do that in two or three stages and most of this video will be copy and pasting of code to not keep it too long as well. It's pretty easy what we want to do, as are most of the things with NVD3, you just need to know how to do them and then everything is relatively simple. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to go into the code and you can remember we've got data.js with our chart data here. We're going to keep chart data but it's going to change a little bit because the section with our values we're now going to generate dynamically rather than have it hard coded here. Just before we do that, I'm going to chop all of the objects in the values list, but one off and just go back into my interface and do a refresh and check it's working with one bar. It is, and we'll just keep that now just to remind ourselves of the format we actually want. So generating the data dynamically, the first thing we need to do is to have a function which will give us a list of objects where those objects have a key of label and a key of value with a randomly generated value. Now to do this we need a function and I've made a function and I'm going to actually paste this function in step by step so you can get an idea of how things are working without listening to me type very very slowly and it's a very very simple function so I've hard coded in a list of labels obviously if you had an API or something coming back this will work slightly differently uh, you can ask me to do that in the comments if you want to uh, in one of my other series I'll be showing that anyway in the view app um, but anyway, here we've just got uh, eight labels, A to H, just as much as we had. This our data here is intended to be the data that we'll actually return. I'm going to say uh, console.log, and just for now, actually, I'm going to log our data just to the console so that we can check everything with our function is then working before we actually go ahead and try and draw the chart, get lots of red text and wonder what's going on. So how am I going to create our data? Very simple. I'm going to loop each one of these labels and for each loop I do, I'm going to add an object to this list where the label key will be the label and I'll generate under the value key a random value. Uh, relatively simple, basic stuff. So just in here then, a new loop. So every one of the labels and for each loop just add the label and add a random value between minus 50 and 50 in this case so we get a varied looking graph and the last thing we do down the here, here then down the bottom here then is just log this to the console the only thing I want to do is actually call this get values now at the moment inside our app every time I click load chart I call the draw chart so what I can do then is I can just temporarily, because we don't need it later on, but is at the top of the draw chart function, I'm just going to call get values so that when I click draw chart a few times, we can see what kind of values are coming out. So let's refresh this. And I'm just going to hit uh, load chart. And here you can see we've got some data, A to H, and a spread of values. Let's do it again. We get some more data, A to H, and a different spread of values. So we can be satisfied that every time we want, we can get ourselves a new set of random values uh, or data for our graph. So that's the first step over with then. The next step then is we actually want to show that data and not the data that we've got hard coded at the top of data.js. So the first thing I'm going to do then is add in another function that I'm going to call refresh chart data. And in this one here, I'm just going to copy the chart data object here because I know what I need. And I'm going to set chart data to be the equivalent of uh, this here. But this time, instead of the values being this, I'm actually going to make the values be get values. Now there's a gotcha here, and that is that get values at the moment, and I speak from experience of messing this up a couple of times, is not actually returning anything. So I do need to remember now to actually return our data from the get values function, otherwise this will be useless, there'll be nothing returned. So now if we have a look, every time I call refresh chart data, chart data will have a new set of values set as its values. And at the top here, I'm just going to remove what I was originally doing with chart data and just leave it empty. Now, of course, if I run the app, I'll get an error. And the reason I'll get an error is because when if I try to draw a chart, chart data is actually empty. And maybe calling um, get values from inside here when I go to draw, but chart data itself 
is never being filled or the values are never being created because I never call refresh chart data. So one thing I do need to do absolutely on program start is I need to call refresh chart data. So at least I've got some data to work with and I'll remove this get values as well now. So all being well, I should be able to go back to the web app, do a refresh, have some data loaded, looks like we have, and then just click on load chart and you can see that we get our data here. Now I can clear and load and clear and load and I still get the same data, nothing's changing. And nothing's changing because I'm not actually recalling refresh chart data at any point in time. So let's change that now, let's create ourselves a new button and let's the action of that button will be to uh, refresh chart data. So let's do that here then. And we'll call this one uh, refresh data, btn refresh data, like so. And now just back into index.html, uh, let's call refresh data, this button here. And I've forgotten what I've called this one. Just go back here, btn refresh data. And that should now have hooked us up that we have a third button and any time we click that button we call refresh chart data. We won't redraw the chart, um, we could also put draw chart so we also redraw the chart automatically whenever um, the data is refreshed here, depends how you want to do it, um, I'll leave everything separated. Um, but now when we refresh it we'll get a new list of data values to have a look at. So let's see how that looks then inside the application, I'll just refresh. We have our button, which is always good. I refresh the data and you can see that it's working. We're getting some new data each time. And now let's load the chart, click refresh data, click load chart. And now you can see that the chart is actually changing. It's not so nice having to click load chart each time. Let's just go back into the, the code here and actually add on draw chart state underneath, straight underneath refresh chart data as well. So things look a little bit more dynamic on the site. Um, not that it's a particularly magnificent app anyway, but let's go to load chart. And now if I click refresh data, each time I do, you can see the chart changing itself and its form with the new data that's being created. All right, then that's it for this video. Um, really simple stuff, as is everything with MVD3. It's a wonderful library. It's just a question usually knowing of where to, where to look for something or how to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, any questions, pop me a comment. Otherwise, see you in the next one.